I know that the last lesson was was a little bit hard, so I'm gonna recap that lesson quickly to explain every line of code that I've write. To create asynchronous, asynchronous action, to create asynchronous operation using Redux, for example, to get to fetch EBI, you just need to import this create async thunk from React.js Redux toolkit and that access library to create that EBI call. Okay, first we have created our action called get box and we use this function create async thunk. This takes two arguments. The first is the get box that's to identify this action. It's a key to, I to identify it. And the second is, a, is an async function. Inside this async function, you can do your asynchronous operations. For example, get data from ABI. We here using axes to, to get the data from that ABI to get list of box. And we just here return that data that we got from our ABI. And this try catch block to detect if we have errors or something, we can log them here. That was our first step. The second step is creating the, the reducer. Here, this function we have used before called create slice. We use it to create our reducer. And we just imported our git box action that we have created here. Okay, we just import it. And we initialized our state. And we here we create our initial state. And it's a list of box and it's empty. Here inside create slice, we just give this slice a name to identify it. Then we give it another property called initial state and this initial state we just take it from here because we're gonna make changes to this initial state and this is gonna be the global state that we can use it using use selector okay here our reducer those reducers if we want to change the global state but without any asynchronous operations like we have done before in our counter reducer just you can put your functions that take the state and update the state but we here we are just using asynchronous operations so it's we left it as an empty object because we don't need it but we just need this new property called extra reducers this extra reducer reducers property we use it to handle asynchronous actions it takes a builder as an argument inside this builder you can add any cases that you want just you just put your action that you have created and when you put your action, you can get a lot of cases. For example, fulfilled or rejected or pending. This pending, you can show loader or something, okay? So just here, when the, our action got fulfilled, we just update this state, I mean the list of box, to the action that payload. What is this action payload? That action payload is what we return here when we return inside this action. We just return our data that we got from our endpoint. If we return here, here any array of numbers, of numbers for example, this action payload is gonna be array of numbers, okay? But we just return our data that we have got from our EBI call, and this data is list of box. So we update our list of box to this data. You can add any cases that you want. For example, let's copy those three lines and paste them here. And if you want, for example, add a loader, you can create here an initial state, a loader, and initialize it with false. And here, get box, in case pending, you can create that loader state dot loader with true. Because when this action is pending, when I'm getting the box and takes a, a time, just make a global loader that we can use it here. And we have another case called rejected. Rejected. You can, when it rejected, you can get list of box. It complained here because when it rejected, it got no action to payload. It got no data because it's rejected. So you can make it an empty array and the loader is false. And here also you should put the loader is false because the data is fulfilled and do not need to show that loader. It was a quick example if you want to create a loader when you are fetching your data. Don't worry, we're gonna create that example in our app. So let's delete all of that. I was just showing you that we can use another status instead of fulfilled, okay? The step number three is the store. You just, you here created your reducer. You just put it inside your store because inside this store, we save here our global state, okay? So you should 
to import your reducer and put it inside our reducer here in the configure store function and finally you just go to any screen that you want and just use use selector to get the data that you want using use selector app just put just return your state and put the key inside your store for example counter or box and our last step is dispatching the action this action called get box that we have created here we just dispatch it to call this endpoint and get the data when we get the data we go to box reducer and save it inside our box state global state so we can import it from here using use selector this lesson was easy not hard if you have any question or something let me know in the comments thanks for watching